Thank you. I think, and thank you, Robin. I think I thought Robin just invited me because I ride motorcycle with her husband. So thanks, Robin, for inviting uh, inviting me uh, to do a presentation on why water matters. And I've learned a new term. It's always good to learn something new every day. And I'm not sure exactly if John referred to me specifically as a propeller head, but I might take that as a bit of a compliment as well, um, because I am one of the government bureaucrats in the world of public health. And certainly what we do is uh, look at evidence and best practices associated with drinking water. And it's a little bit of that that I'm here to speak about today. Uh, like Antoine, I need to preface my presentation by saying these opinions are mine and only mine and not necessarily those of views of Interior Health Authority. Um, and I do want to talk about community drinking water. Uh, and community drinking water as opposed to a private well or a, or a water license talking about community drinking water. Uh, and here in Interior Health, you'll see, well, as I'll show you later, we have about 2,000 drinking water systems. This is primarily a provincial responsibility, provincial regulated responsibility. However, uh, hopefully through this presentation and others on drinking water, we can maybe take away some opportunities that can be considered at the federal level. And uh, as uh, John mentioned, and I'll mention now, uh, there is uh, a lot of improvement that needs to occur uh, with drinking water safety in this region. Part of um, my propeller head role in Interior Health, I'm going to use that now, thanks John, um, is with uh, the Department of, the, of Health Protection, so Public Health Health Protection. And our role uh, is first as professionals, uh, drinking water officers, public health engineers, public health inspectors, medical health officers. Our role is to, um, to uh, work with the business sector and engage with community leaders to address provincial public health issues that focus on, and you'll see here, food safety, uh, healthy land development, communicable disease investigations, environmental exposures, and of course, drinking water quality. With respect to drinking water quality, Interior Health is one of the five health authorities in British Columbia that have responsibility for administrating the Drinking Water Protection Act and regulation. So for me, water matters because everyone should have equitable access to clean, safe, reliable drinking water, which is a key part of a healthy, thriving community. Clean water should mean that it is tested regularly to determine if it meets the Canadian guidelines for drinking water and that there are no boil water advisories issued on that water system. Safe water should mean that there is little chance of getting sick from it when you drink it. Your water system should have a protected source. There should be adequate treatment and a secure distribution system. Safe means the staff and management are well trained and follow best practices. Reliable water should mean that it will remain clean and safe by proper operation and maintenance of a secure water source not only for today, but for tomorrow. Reliable is very important in this, in this region. Sadly, this is not the case with many community water systems within the Interior Health region. Here is a slide of the, quickly to depict uh, the, uh, the British Columbia and Interior Health perspective for water quality, drinking water quality. Um, first off, uh, interior Health in Orange is in the southern interior, and that's the geographic area of what is considered Interior Health Authority, one of the five health regions. But first off, for British Columbia, through a 20-year period, through nine, from 1980 through to 2000, there were 29 significant waterborne outbreaks in British Columbia, notably, uh, more locally, uh, Kelowna, Cranbrook, Revelstoke, and Princeton. And uh, BC is also, has also one of the highest national rates for enteric illness, Salmonella, E. coli, Campylobacter, Cryptosporidium, Giardia, some of the uh, types of illnesses. Closer to home, Interior Health, we have a total population of just under uh, three quarters of a million residents. 
and again, drinking water systems, we have almost 2,000 community drinking water systems. The part that's uh, even a little more alarming is using the, the, the Public Health Act, uh, sorry, Drinking Water Protection Act, 50% um, are rated as either moderate or high risk. And 23%, or 449, of those water systems are currently on a boil water advisory. The contributing factors for when, uh, sorry, just one, I, I get it back here. The vast majority of these uh, water systems uh, are small water systems. So the Crestons, for example, uh, we're talking about water systems that are about 300 connections or less. So we're talking about your small communities, your residential subdivisions, mobile home parks, campgrounds, resorts, schools, daycares. Those are what make up the 1,936 uh, community water systems within Interior Health. And when boil water advisories are issued, they're usually issued uh, because the, um, the water supplier or the drinking water officer believes that there is a threat or a vulnerability to the water system. And quite often that is also because of the presence of E. coli or other bacteria present in the water. So the list we have here right now of the boil water advisories, some of the typical contributing factors for, uh, for why a boil water advisory is issued. Uh, just, this is in no particular order, but source contamination, inadequate disinfection or treatment, inadequate monitoring equipment, inade inadequate monitoring procedures, equipment failure, inadequate construction, repairs or maintenance of the water system, unapproved water supply or uh, construction occurring without uh, construction permits. Turbidity, big, big issue in our part of the world. We get a lot of spring runoff, freshet, uh, rainfall, heavy rainfall events. They contribute to turbidity. Uh, the treatment uh, systems are overwhelmed. They can't handle the increased water flow and turbidity. Uh, we, we issue a boil water advisory. Cross-contamination, inadequate protection of reservoir and intakes, and inadequate protection of distribution systems. Those are all uh, contributing factors that in one or in multiple ways can be why boil water advisories are issued. So why so many outbreaks and advisories? And John's, John's quite, quite accurate. Um, there are new uh, national and provincial, provincial uh, standards. And the answer uh, is why so many outbreaks and advisories is that uh, most, if not all, of these 1,936 water systems were created prior to 2000. And yes, that was when we had the horrific Walkerton outbreak, May 2000. It radically altered the government's perspective, all the government's perspective on drinking water across all of Canada. The devastating Walkerton tragedy occurred uh, and the world witnessed not only the seven fatalities, but half of the population, 2,500 people, became severely ill from consuming E. coli contaminated drinking water. John went into some of the details about why. Absolutely, and he used the word criminal. I call it a tragedy. Uh, we're both right. The tragedy provided a national impetus for provincial governments to refocus their attention on drinking water safety. And in BC, that was the Drinking Water Protection Act and regulation. Interestingly, it was the provincial NDP of the day who brought in the Drinking Water Protection Act, provincially. And then later, when the Liberal government uh, was elected, they retweaked it and uh, reintroduced it again. So it was a bipartisan. Hmm provincially. The, and it could have been Courtney. The point I think that we're, we're going to make is did we get it right and, or did we get it wrong? The point was I think we can make now is in terms of outbreaks when we had 29 in that 20 year period from 1980 to 2000 before the legislation to today less outbreaks. Yes more boil water advisories. Yes more uh, improvements to the existing community water systems that were developed and in place before 2000, 
Did we get it right? I'm not a politician. I'm not going to answer that. I can't answer that. However, it's an improvement going forward. Oh, I won't need two minutes. Um, so why so many outbreaks and advisories? Uh, the outbreaks were before uh, the unfortunate criminal tragedy of Walkerton, uh, and now uh, different mechanisms in place, maybe too much, but uh, uh, we're seeing uh, less outbreaks. Um, advisories are going up, and um, hopefully there's more awareness out there. Challenges facing community water systems. Again, uh, they were developed, those water systems that were developed before the legislation are in significant need of infrastructure improvements, including source water protection or even new sources. These improvements require incredible amount of capital investment. And uh, the governance that uh, John was alluding to, a lot of these water systems are private or semi-private ownerships and they do not have uh, the equal access to secure government funding. Uh, so the governance is an issue. And I use the word attitude that pristine equals safe water. Uh, that still is an issue. Uh, it's, is it natural? Is it, is it man-made? Uh, the fact is, our, especially our source waters out there have background levels of cryptosporidium, giardia, and then sometimes uh, Campylobacter, E. coli, etc. Um, it's out there, and yes, it's beautiful, it's pristine, it's coming off the mountains and the, ac and the, uh, the ice fields, but that's, that's just part of what's in the makeup of the water. And it's the, we need to start educating ourselves and our, our, our next generations to recognize that some level of awareness and treatment, not necessarily all, but some, needs to be there. Because uh, in some cases, water rates are not high enough to deal with the, the necessary basics to make the water safe. Did I preface that well enough? Um, closing comments. Uh, I'm trying to find something at a national level. Uh, all Canadians, we need to learn more about our community water system. As John said, to throw out the bums in office now, bring in some new ones. I don't know, but we need to learn more about our community water systems. We need to find out who's operating the water system. We need to learn more about the source, the treatment, the infrastructure, what is the actual water quality, and we need to pay attention to if advisories are issued, what does that mean? What does that mean in terms of uh, risk and cost? And economic and tourism and all those other pieces. When we had the uh, uh, outbreak in Cranbrook, um, the ch president of the Chamber of Commerce came up with some horrific multi-million dollar loss to the community for that tourism value for that one year. At a national level, uh, public health needs a national surveillance system to, for the collection of waterborne disease outbreak data to better inform practice and policy. There are equities in water quality and protection standards from province to province across this country. So not all Canadians have equal access to safe, clean, reliable drinking water. And again, clean, safe, and reliable drinking water does matter to all Canadians, and we need to not take it for granted. Thank you. Thank you, Ron.